What did Harlan Barnett have to say about the quarterback battle going into the Rutgers game? Also, what else happened during the bye week that could impact Michigan State? And then, friend of the program, Anthony Ayani, he joins the show to talk about all things Michigan State basketball. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, welcome back to another show of Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. Hope you all had a great bye week. I know I did. It is a just fantastic college football season overall. A little bit of a bummer that's kind of circusy in our neck of the woods, but hey, everywhere else, it's been a fantastic college football season. No shortage of entertainment in the bye week. We're going to get to a lot of that, you know, how it impacts Michigan State. Could there be other big name coaching searches elsewhere in the country? But first, hey, please rate, review, and subscribe to this here podcast or YouTube show. And if you are listening on podcast, hey, please leave us five stars. Or not, whatever makes you happy. But yes, five stars. Uh, this helps the podcast out and all of that good stuff. But enough about that. Let's get into the show here. We're going to talk about something that happened before the weekend because acting head coach Harlan Barnett, he joined the weekly coaches show because, well, that's what he does now. He's the head coach. That's part of the responsibilities. And he was asked about the quarterback competition between Noah Kim, Kaden Hauser, and of course, Sam Levitt, the true freshman. And he said, quote, we are looking at everybody. It's wide open. It's still a competition. It will always be that way. Now, if you listen to the episode before the weekend, we expect Kaden Hauser to be named the starter here at Michigan State. And I think that quote pretty much backs that up too. I'll say it again. We're looking at everybody. It's wide open. It's still a competition. It will always be that way. Juxtapose that with his quote after the Maryland game where he benched Noah Kim, put in Kaden Hauser, and then said, no, oh, no, there's not a quarterback competition. No, come on. No, it's Noah Kim's job. A little different than saying, "Mm -mm, nope, it's an open competition. It always is, always will be. I, I think that we could read between the lines there and say, well, okay, it's probably going to be Kaden Hauser this Saturday. Now, I don't expect everyone to, you know, fall out of their chair hearing that news because this isn't like it's some, you know, groundbreaking discovery or piece of earth shattering news here because Noah Kim as a starting quarterback in his three games against power five opponents this year, one touchdown drive. Okay, I, I think it's time for a change, especially, you know, after an offseason where this was a quarterback battle that was supposedly from what we know, neck and neck throughout the whole offseason. Yeah, it, it's probably time to Turn the page and move on to the next chapter of younger guys that can grow in these last seven games here for the 2023 season. This isn't like, you know, Noah Kim is a third year incumbent starter and he's built up so much goodwill here that it's impossible to have him lose his seat. Like, no, we we, we all see what's going on here. And so, again, it's an open competition. Well, I don't know if we were saying that after the Maryland game. So one other thing that was notable from the Harlan Barnett coaches show is he said that Malik Carr is looking good to return this season. Of course, many of you remember the Iowa game, six catches, like the hottest first quarter that any position player has had this year for Michigan State. He loses his shoe, dings up his uh, foot or ankle a little bit in the Iowa game, misses the rest of that. So needless to say, that is going to be a quite literally big target coming back for Michigan State, all six foot seven of him. And yeah, clearly had something good going early on against Iowa. So for a game coming up where the opponent has a stingy pass defense like Rutgers does, yeah, having any weapon at your disposal is going to be necessary. Now let's fly around the country here and find out what else happened during the bye week. Iowa. They won a game uh, without completing a single pass to a receiver and their quarterback, Deacon Hill, the backup quarterback that came into the game against Michigan State. He went six of 21 passing and they still beat Purdue. So as if you weren't feeling bad enough about that game a few Saturdays ago, let me just bring up how truly horrible it is down in Iowa. And anyway, no, we're going to move on to the next thing here. Uh, so. Rutgers is the next opponent on Michigan State's schedule, of course, as you may know by now. Noon, Big Ten Network coming up, and they 
lost to Wisconsin over the weekend. Uh, started off their game three and out four times in their first five drives. Yikes. Quarterback Gavin Wimsat, 16 of 35 passing. If you can do the math in your head, that is below 50%. And yet, Michigan State opens up as four-point underdogs on the road. The over-under is 43-and-a-half. So Vegas is implying that the final score is going to be 24-20 to or 23-20 if you want to take a hair under the total there. So, yeah, that's what uh, we got up against us. And that's where Michigan State is right now in this 2023 season. Underdogs going to Rutgers, but hey, you know what? We'll be talking about this game throughout the week here and, of course, give plenty of reasons why and how Michigan State can win that game. But until then, that is what Vegas is telling you. Now, we are going to fly out of the Big Ten because nothing else really notable happened in the Big Ten. However, there's some really entertaining games. Like, look, the, the Red River rivalry, um, amazing game, but nothing really notable there other than hope you watch that game. We're going to look at the Miami game. And the Texas A&M game, because after both of those teams spilt the chili all over themselves, A&M had the ball in their own, or sorry, in Alabama territory, fourth and one. They decided to punt. They ultimately lose that game by less than a touchdown. Will Jimbo probably should have not punted there anyway. The Aggie fans are getting a little sick of Jimbo Fisher. Could A&M be a job? That becomes open this offseason and competes with Michigan State's candidate pool. I don't know. Or the Miami game. You guys all know what happened to that. We'll get into that in a hot second. But let's talk about what the buyouts are for AM and Miami after going through a few other positions. Because, you know, there is an odds board out there. They're not like sanctioned sports books or anything like that. But if you look hard enough, you can find an odds board of the next coach to be fired at their school. And that is something I was thinking about in the off season or not the off season. I'm sorry. The off week, the bye week is who else will Michigan state have to compete against in this upcoming off season here for a power five job. And the next coaches that are, you know, slated to be fired per this odds board, Danny Gonzalez. Okay. New Mexico. I think despite what Michigan fans say, I think Michigan state is a better job than the New Mexico job, but what other power five jobs are going to be available that will have to compete with Michigan state, Jeff Halfley at Boston college. Okay. MSU probably better than that job. Tony Elliott at Virginia. Brent Pye at Virginia. Brent Pry, excuse me, at Virginia Tech. Tom Allen at Indiana. Michigan State probably better than all of those. Now we're going to get into the 10 to 1 next coach to get fired, like Billy Napier at Florida. That could be a job that is better than Michigan State. Or the Jimbo Fisher is at 12 to 1 at Texas AM. Now I do want to highlight this. I know there's a lot of money down there in College Station, and buyouts really don't mean a thing. However, what if they are $75 million worth of buyouts? That is what Texas A&M would be going up against if they wanted to get rid of Jimbo Fisher right now. So I don't know how realistic it is that A&M is going to also be in the head coaching pool like Michigan State is right now. Miami, could they fire Mario Cristobal after he completely passed himself Saturday night against Georgia Tech? Well, he just signed a 10-year, $80 million contract. He's only in his second season. You can only imagine that that buyout is going to be in the 50 if not $60 million range because, well, he just saw the ink dry not too long ago on that. And while we're just talking about this Miami thing, everyone in the world has an opinion on the Miami fiasco on Saturday night. Might as well add my two cents. It, it's the bye week. Let's. I don't know if you guys even care about my opinion, but yeah, here is mine. Everyone knows what happened. At least anyone with a good internet connection knows what happened at that fateful night in Coral Gables. Uh, Miami, they could have just taken a knee. They could have won the game. They didn't. They ran the ball. They fumbled. And against all odds, Georgia Tech, a team with just 170 total yards before this all happened, they stormed down the field in 25 seconds and beat the Hurricanes. Now, let's talk about Mario Cristobal here for a second. Um, for me, it was the reaction to all of this that made it even worse for him, right? I mean, look, you're an idiot for not kneeling the ball in the first place. And apparently, this is something that Miami has done all season. Whenever they have a game wrapped up this season, they still do handoffs up the middle and risk player injury, risk turnovers, or just whatever. Anyway, it's the reaction that really got a rise out of me and a lot of other people. This isn't a unique take, but it's... Uh, Definitely one that is worth looking at here. 
his reaction after the game is just mumbling something about like the clock and how he got the ball with the minute 57 and he worked it down to 27 seconds and just seeming like the smartest guy in the room and almost like educating everyone like, Oh, this is, well, this is what we did. And then preaching that, well, we preach two hands in our program, you know, carrying the ball with two hands and, Oh, we should have taken a timeout here yet. Blaming the kids after that game is such a disgusting and just coward response to what just happened there. And you could talk about timeouts all you want. Oh yeah, we should have taken a timeout and remind them to carry the ball with two hands. Or you could also use your timeouts while Georgia Tech has those plays storming down the field. After the first big completion, no timeout by Miami. And then what happens the next play? Receiver gets right behind him, automatic touchdown. So no, not only are you an idiot for not kneeling the ball, but you're also a loser now for putting the blame on the players. I mean, if you want to bring this back to Michigan State, kind of reminded me of the post game against Indiana last year where Mel Tucker only pointed to player execution errors after they blew a 17-point lead at home against Indiana to go to a bowl game. But I digress. Uh, neither him nor Mario are here at Michigan State, so I will stop talking about this. Let's get to our guy, Anthony Ayani, here in a hot second to talk all things Michigan State basketball. But first, yes, we need to talk athletic brewing company, the best non-alcoholic beer in the game. And also, now is the time for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like blankets are a game changer. That's right. If you're up here in Michigan, getting a little chilly right now, just like blankets, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good, and they just dropped their pumpkin non-alcoholic beer. So if you're in a state where you can order beer, head to athleticbrewing.com come and snag that for the fall. This is truly the best there is to have on game day because you can knock a few of these back, especially if it's a night game, and then wake up the next morning and you're not going to feel hung over. You're not going to feel sluggish because, hey, again, non-alcoholic beers, and these are some of the best tasting beer that you will have. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic beers at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKDOWN, that's all one word, to get 15% off of your first online order. That is code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all time. We are now joined by former Michigan State player, current friend of the program, and just real life. It is Anthony Ayani, or as some people call him, I just found out, Mr. Miami. Any way you want to slice it, it's AI, our guy. AI, how on earth are we doing? There is, uh, I mean, there's football already in full season, but there's also basketball in the air as Midnight Madness is coming up this Friday. Exhibition's not too long after that, but are, are we doing okay in your neck of the woods over there? Oh, yeah, man. Everything's great. You know, just enjoying life right now. My three kids, you know, they're staying happy, healthy. Me and the girlfriend are great. New job's going really well. I mean, we talked about that beforehand. And I, I love living the life of a school administrator, man. It's fun. It's a lot of hard work. But, you know, I'm, I'm where I belong. I'm where I belong, man. Look at you. Hitting for the cycle there. Everything's all good in the hood <laughs> over there. Before the weekend, AI, uh, the Big Ten preseason all-conference team was dropped. Ten players make this list in every single preseason. So let's just go down some names here. Why not? Let's let's check this out. Zach Eady of Purdue, unanimous decision. Terrence Shannon of Illinois, unanimous decisions. Jameer Young of Maryland, unanimous decision. Boo Booey, our, our favorite player of all time. <laughs> Still over there, there, huh? <laughs> yep, Northwestern. I don't even have to say the school. You guys know who Boo Booey is. He is unanimous. All right. Those are the four unanimous players. And you have Julian Reese of Maryland, Dawson Garcia of Minnesota, Kasai uh, Taminaga of Nebraska, Cliff Amaruri of Rutgers, and then well, I'm missing two players, AI. It's AJ Hogard and Tyson Walker on the preseason all Big Ten list. However, not unanimous. So there's two ways to look at this. Either, hey, get fired up, root for our boys. All right. You guys made the preseason team. Or Take it a sign of disrespect that only two Spartans are on here and none of them are unanimous. Which road are you going to go down, AI? I would definitely, you know, take that, get ticked off and show people why we should have yeah. been. Um, yes. You know, because, I mean, Zach Eady, it's obvious. I mean, sure. um, yeah. I think I think you said Boo Boo, he was the other one that was. He know, was. He was like unanimous. That, see, see, yeah. see no, no disrespect to him. I mean, he's a great player, but I'm mm -hmm. taking Tyson Walker, AJ Hogart as unanimous over, you know, over yeah. him. Because, I mean, look at the track record of the two. Look what happened last year in the NCAA tournament. I mean, those two were basically yeah. kind of carried the team, if you will, to the Sweet 16. 
where Boo Boo, he didn't even make the CBI tournament last year. Like, like, come yeah. on, like, what, what are we doing here? So I obviously think there's going to be a big chip on the shoulder mentality from those two because they got a lot to prove. But I think at the same time, too, it's also going to rub off onto the team because it's like, okay, we may be top three in the country, but who cares? Like, we're trying to go out yeah. here to win. We're trying to go out to prove to people that, you know what, we're not just – we're not a fluke. We're not. We're not just an okay team. We're a great team. And no Jaden Akins either. Which, like, I, yeah, I that was surprising too. That was very yeah, surprising. It, it, it is surprising. I mean, no disrespect to anyone else on the list. Like, th- this is mm-hmm. a good list of ten players. There's not one that it I would is. like knock off. But I gotta say, I, I do like seeing some kids getting left off the list here. You know, let's build this chip on right. the shoulder as high as possible. Let's not AI get too fat and sassy mm-hmm. before the season rolls around. So yeah, let's let's put a fire under these kids' bellies here. Um, now. This is the preseason list. The postseason list, you get your first team, second team, third team, honorable mention. The last time Michigan State had three or more on any of the three All Big Ten teams was 2018. They had four kids make the team. I'm going to put the over under at three and a half. When the season ends, over or under three and a half Spartans get either first, second, or third team All Big Ten honors. I'm putting you on the hot seat right off the bat here. I'm going over. Okay. I'm taking okay. I'm taking it over. I, I think I think I think AJ Steven and, Tyson... Izzo, and then who else? Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Nick Nick Sanders. Um <laughs> yes. <laughs> now we're t- now we're cooking. Yeah. Um no, I think I think AJ and Tyson will be at least first or second team. Both those guys. Mm-hmm. I think Jade, I think Jaden, same deal, first or second team. And then you, you may not you may call me crazy for this one, but I really think either Cohen Cohen Carr, you know, might be yeah. potential, you know, second or third if he has a season I think he can have and Xavier right. Booker like if, if Xavier can play defense and average like 10 to 12 a game like you know he's going to be on those lists so I really think Michigan State has a chance to put anywhere between four to five guys on all conference yeah. teams total this year I really truly believe that five would be bananas but like the, it's it's the squad to do it I mean yeah it maybe is it really is hurt and like maybe what hurts Michigan State a little bit is something that Tom Izzo was talked about is like he's gonna be doing like playing 11 men right off oh, the jump yet. here so yeah is there enough ball to go around for everyone? But by the time, you know, you cut it to ideally like an eight man rotation by the time mm-hmm. February rolls around, I hope right. to see if you can even do it by then. It's going to be a lot of talent on this team, but a good problem to have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I think like AJ Tyson and Jaden are your locks, but yeah, like there's a sum of that Cohen. He's getting so much preseason hype, not just Nice Lansing, but from like national media too. like Andy Katz just had, I think it was a top 10. I think he classified him as a power forward. Might have been small forward, but regardless, he had him as the number eight at that position. Yeah, in the yeah. Country, not amongst freshmen, but like in the whole country. In, in, like, in the whole oh. country, and, and he <laughs> he hasn't even played a minute yet. And I think I, I think the the cool thing about the exhibition game against Tennessee in a couple of weeks is you know they're going to be thrown right into the fire. It's like okay, this is the type of yeah. competition we're going to be playing right off the bat. So how good are these freshmen against top top level competition? And then if you think about it, like two weeks after that, they're thrown in the fire against Duke. And then they're really yeah. got to show up. Like it's like it's like okay, you're playing potentially number one team in the country right off the bat, first game of the season. So it's basically the sink or swim for the freshman right off the bat. So they're they're either going to get a hard lesson right off the bat, or they're going to get a really good lesson. So I obviously think that, and I think this should happen every year. Like I, I personally believe that you know every single Power Five school should schedule a charity charity exhibition game against yeah. you know somebody would well, that way that way it, it it's at least something that way the fans can come out and see both teams play so like if it's you know if michigan state and gonzaga want to do something at michigan state next year but it's a charity exhibition game i think that would be a fair thing to do would the ncaa allow that like i would hope they would like i would hope they would but i mean who, who oh, knows yeah. with, with with what what their rules are i know the ncaa has a great track record they always make the right decision uh, but like they they couldn't screw this up, right? Like this would be a really right. cool trend, just like you're saying to like get going here. I mean, just right, for the exactly. Because because if you think about it, Matt, like every every year with Michigan State, and not just Michigan State, but like any any college basketball team in general, they're always yeah. playing like the D two schools, the D three right. schools, like the Grand Valley State. I mean, even though I was on that Grand Valley team seven, 16 years ago, that beat them. Um, I want to want to go want to go against Coach Izzo, so um, I got that record <laughs> right over him. But the point I'm making here is. Why not have like one exhibition game where you play that D2, D3 type of team? And then the next one is a charity exhibition game where you could pick, oh, I don't know, say, oh, say you want to play Oklahoma and Oklahoma sure. wants to come to East Lansing. And then you flip flop it the next year. So that way everybody in Norman can watch Michigan State. So I really think it's something that college basketball should really look into because, again, 
it's a win-win for both schools because now, you know, it's a home and home. So like this year, maybe, you know, obviously Michigan State played in Knoxville last year. So Tennessee's coming here next year. All right, let's do Gonzaga next year in Spokane. Switch it up. Have them come to East Lansing after that. So it's a win-win for everybody. And then the universities come together and figure out, okay, what charity do we want to pick? What charity do we want mm-hmm. to raise money for? And all the funds go to them. So I think it's something that every you know university or every Power 5 school should really look into. I love it. We, we got to run that up the flagpole. I don't know how much pole we have here on Lockdown Spartans, but raise the flag, we'll, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try to squeeze every juice out of this orange here uh, moving forward here. Um, I want to talk something like off the court here. I want to get your opinion on Midnight Madness and the Izzo camp out here. That's yeah. right, you know, just something for the fans here. But AI, hey, I'm so sorry. I hate to do this to an esteemed guest, but I got to send you to the bench right now because I need to talk to people's ear off about E bay motors passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive that's right we're talking about your vehicle folks ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and way more whether you're into speed power or just style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts let me say that again over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you will always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit for your ride every time or it's your hard-earned money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash God, I love that line. That's a good one. Burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to you as customers. And let's get the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Miami, back on the show here. Now, we are in between two very fun events for the fan base here. One's more so for the students. The is on camp out happened over the weekend. And for the 20th year in a row, it happened in 40 degree weather, sideways wind, rain. I'm starting to convince myself that like Tom Izzo has found out how to manipulate weather and he gives the is the most brutal conditions just to iron forge them for the season. We can talk about that conspiracy another time this Friday, midnight madness, AI. It's a former player. What's what's just more fun for you guys, like between those two events? Oh man, I, I think the, two, I, two I, good I, I think I think the camp out in all honesty. Okay, um, because my, I remember my very first camp out I did. You know, I knew I knew a couple people there, but then the next year, you know, I actually played like ten on ten touch football with a bunch gotcha. of a bunch of campers, <laughs> and, and actually I became really good friends with a lot of those guys over the years, and still am. So. So I say the camp out because, you know, at first, like you meet all the is own students, but then, you know, the next year when you really see them again, you really get to know them more. And all of a sudden I become good friends with them. And so, but I always kind of put it upon myself during my career to kind of be that type of guy who wanted to interact with fans. Cause I knew yeah. like, okay, I wasn't going to be the guy that wasn't going to make all the game winning shots to be all conference, but I wanted to be the guy who was interacting with our fans. And it, it, it actually started when Rasheed Wallace was when he was with the Pistons. So this would have been the year they lost to the Spurs in the finals. So before okay. all that in the regular season, first time I ever went to a Pistons game at the Palace of my life. So I see Rasheed Wallace walk out of the huddle during a timeout and go sit at the scores table and just start yucking it up with fans <laughs> and, and, and people at the scores table. I was like, you know, what? that's really cool. So that's all I ever did with the ISOM during pregame warmups was I would go to the scores table, stretch out, and just yuck it up with our fans and just have a conversation. So, Love but that it. was because that was because of the camp out because I got to meet a lot of them and just chat with them. And then ones I did meet at the camp out, like I met them through the game. So, and obviously, like Midnight Madness is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work too because you okay. know because you get there, doors open at nine, and then we're signing autographs for an hour and a half, and we're getting hand cramps it's so and then you go from that to the player introductions then you're waiting another 45 minutes for the women to go do their thing and then you're trying to stretch out get loose again and then we're supposed to go out for like a 45 minute practice last scrimmage but my favorite midnight madness though was my senior year so we had it was the day before we played michigan in football in 2011 so coach Izzo gave us two options we can either have practice at 1 30 in the morning or (laughs) We pushed practice after the Michigan game, and me, Draymond, and the other seniors kind of looked at each other like, you know what, screw it. Like, let, let's practice at 1.30 in the morning, and then Love let's it. just knock it out and have the entire day off and we can sleep after <laughs> the game. So we got done at 3 a.m., 
And then me and Austin Thornton walk out of the arena at 3.30. I go, 18, what time is it? He looks at his watch and goes, dude, it's 3.30. I said, what time do we have to be back here for the tailgate? He goes, 8.30. I'm like, why, why don't we just sleep in the locker room? And that's what guys did. They slept in the locker room that night and then woke up at 8.15 and they went upstairs for the tailgate for breakfast. And then we were all hyped for that game. And then we all slept Great the next game. day. So, but it, that had to have been the most hype practice ever too. It really was because guys were just like, all right, let's go. We're here. And then all these recruits for, that were in for the weekend watch practice do with their families. And I saw someone wow. just going, I'm like, right. you know, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they all bring a lot of great memories. But, again, is on camp out. You're there to interact with the fans, get to know them, whereas Midnight Madness was a little bit more a little bit more of a job to do, you know, sure. than, being, than being at the camp out. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like more of a show, really, yeah. that, that yeah. you're doing. But, yeah. Better weather at Midnight Madness than it is at <laughs> camp out. But like, I just, I, I still just can't get over that. It, it without fail every single year, not most of the years, every single year, it is just hellacious weather for. Oh, it's brutal cold. Brutal cold. Out there <laughs> is what it is. Do you remember any of the recruits that were there for, for that visit? And did they commit? Do, do you do you remember? I'm trying to think of what class that'd be. 2000. So that that, that would have been that would have been Costello, Kaminsky, okay. Gary, and uh, Denzel. I know Gary hadn't committed okay. to us yet. He was about a month later. But I know okay. I know Costello and Kaminsky were there. Obviously, Denzel was there because he's he's a Lansing area kid. Sure. So right. I don't remember Gary being there, but I remember that we had a, a lot of juniors that were there too, and we had a, like some up right, upcoming sophomores too. So I, I could just tell in their faces, like, oh, my gosh. Like, if I come to Michigan <laughs> State, this is what I got to deal with. It's like, <laughs> yep. yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Like, we had to make it fun because we knew, yeah. okay, it's 1 a.m. practice sucks right now. But, like, look, yeah. we're up. Michigan, Mich Michigan, we're, we're playing fo Michigan football tomorrow. Right. So yeah. let's knock out five, four hours of sleep, come back here all hype. And let's go talk some trash, just some Wolverines all day tomorrow, which is what we did. And we had a blast doing it. So, and then, yeah. then I took an afternoon nap. So we weren't complaining. We weren't complaining. It was the right choice. It sounds like a great weekend. Yeah. You, you won the weekend basically. That's, that's what it we, sounds we did. like. We did. <laughs> and speaking of wins here, this is a project you've been talking about. Like, honestly, like I was trying to think of when the first time you told me about this project was, and I think it was even before COVID, but yeah. the sensory room at Breslin center. Yeah, talk about that, man, because uh, it's it's a thing. It's here, and there's no better person to talk about it than with you. So, dude, like, first of all, congrats, and second of all, Thank what's you. it all about? Yeah. Oh man, J just the well. First of all, you know, the sensory room. You know, it was basically an idea that came together five years ago, and it was something okay. that, I, that I annoyed the heck out of the Breslin Center management for years to the point <laughs> I think they were like, "Okay, we if we find a spot for this thing, he's gonna leave us alone." You know. So, um, but. You know, I had a family come up to me five years ago and tell me that their son and their kids couldn't come to Michigan State games because of the sensory overload because they were on the spectrum. And the parents sure. of Michigan State alum. So that's when I started, you know, kind of kicking the tires in my head a little bit. And I was like, OK, you know, maybe we can get something done. And so I did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people. And so, you know, when Breslin Center had the space, you know, they said, OK, now we need somebody to, you know, provide the furniture i was like it's neat that's easy you know freddie freddie bello freddie the pizza man foundation 8.7 out of 10 on dave portnoy's you know pizza scale so that's best, best that's pizza good. in metro detroit <laughs> by far yeah. and so because what freddie's foundation does matt is they do sent they put together sensory rooms in schools so they had never okay. done major arenas before and the breslin center was kind of their first ever and then just recently they opened one at ford field and freddie and his foundation were part of that too so they're really starting to trickle in now, you know, more arenas in the state of Michigan and Freddie's foundation is a part of that. But the fact that we have a sensory room with, you know, bubble screens, bubble walls, um, you know, games, you know, weighted, weighted blankets, just like, you know, little fidget sure. toys, just like everything that comes with a sensory room. The fact that Michigan State was the first Big Ten school to house a sensory room in this type of arena in the conference, we have now set the foundation for that. We have now set the standard for Big Ten schools to try to follow us. And I could be more proud of that. And obviously, it couldn't have been done without Freddie. Like, I give Freddie so much sure. credit because it was his foundation that provided all the furniture. Um, you know, I got to give, you know, Alan Haller and the athletic department credit, too, and the Breslin Center management staff, too, because they didn't have to listen to that idea that I had. They didn't have to listen to that. But the fact that, like President Teresa Woodruff said at the uh, remarks at the event, she loves being competitive. She wants Michigan State yeah. to be the first in everything that we can be. And the fact that she found out that we were the first in this, 
she loved it. And so, but I think having Coach Izzo kind of be, you know, really at the at, at the front of all of this and say, hey, let's get this done, it really meant a lot to me. So, so the Breslin Center has that accommodation now, not just for those with autism, but with those with sensory needs. And it was a team effort, but you know, the fact it got done at Michigan State, my alma mater, yeah. you know, it, it that meant to me more than anything in the world. And I think the other cool part is, you know, my dad was in an athletic ministry at Michigan State for 26 years. He had a hand in everything that came to facilities. He had a hand in the expansion of the north end zone there, um, the the clubs on the on the on the west side of the stadium. He had a part in Mon Arena. So like to see all those buildings that my dad had a part of, and for me to have my name and to have a part of this, you know, one I love it because it's part of my dad's my family's legacy. But two, like it's yeah. actually cool that I got to be at the forefront of something else, just like my father used to be. Making moves. Look at you, man. <laughs> Just sending everyone into the week with some positive news here. I, let's go. You know what? That's what I'm talking about, AI. Always great talking to you. And yeah, that's, we're, we're that's not done yet either, time. Matt. We're not done yet either. There's talk of putting one in Spartan Stadium eventually. And the folks over, awesome. at, um, over at IM West with their new sports and rec center yeah. uh, being built soon, they've reached out to me and they want to put one in the new IM building. So you know, nice. I, I was like, you know what, let's, let's just put a sensory room in every single building on campus and then just say nobody in the Big Ten could touch us after that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there we go. I love that. Man, that's awesome. Just constantly making moves. That's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, we'll, we'll, of course, have you on throughout basketball season, even before, because I do want to get more into that Grand Valley State versus Michigan State scrimmage oh, yeah. at a later date. Right, right when we get to, like, scrimmage time, because I remember that day fondly. It's not an exciting story for my end. Way more exciting on your end. So we'll get into that the next time you're on. But until then, man, hey. Thanks a lot for dropping by. Really do appreciate you, man. No, thanks, Matt. Always appreciate you, brother. You got it. We appreciate the listeners, the viewers. Love every single one of you. Now go enjoy the rest of your week. Let's go. Go green.